happy Sabbath. Uh, we want to welcome you to this blessed Sabbath. We trust that you've had a blessed uh, week and we want to uh, start together in this uh, week's lesson. Uh, before we start, let us pray. Loving Father, Lord, we want to thank you so much for the week past. Thank you, Lord, for taking care of us. And thank you, Lord Father, for giving us this opportunity to study the word, thy word uh, this morning. We ask this in Jesus' name. My name is Brian Siabe, and I'd like to invite my colleagues also in the panel to introduce themselves. I start with uh, my friend on uh, my left. Happy Sabbath. My name is Moseti Matundura. Happy Sabbath. My name is Janet Chematia. Welcome. So we are on lesson uh, 13, which says, Waging Peace. I like, I like the, the author's choice of that name, waging peace. That, that, that word is usually associated with uh, war, you know, waging war, waging a grudge. But what we are seeing here is waging peace. Uh, and to follow up from last week where we uh, were studying a call to stand, uh, this is actually part two of what we were looking at uh, last week, a call to stand. We are continuing in this metaphor that Paul is using, a uh, metaphor of war. That we as Christians, we, we are in a war and we saw uh, slightly in a summary uh, the weapons that are at our disposal that we ought to use in this war. But today we are going to uh, look at them in detail. Now imagine Paul writing this letter. As he was writing, he was in a prison. So picture him uh, writing this letter and uh, definitely he knew that in a few uh, days' time, in a few months' time, he's going to be brought before Emperor Nero. You know, he would stand before Emperor Nero, you know, uh, Emperor seated there, dressed, you know, in his um, vestiges of authority. And here is Paul, you know, in his tattered clothes, standing before him. And in his mind, he pictures in these final words, the Ephesians, he pictures and writes uh, these words, you know, of a Roman soldier and uses that metaphor of a soldier preparing himself for war and, uh, and, and pens uh, this passage that we have been uh, uh, looking at uh, uh, this, this past two weeks. Uh, perhaps as we start, let me read uh, Ephesians uh, 6, 16 and 17. It says, In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God. Now Michael in looking at this uh, this uh, passage what I post to you the church a unified army what can you tell us about that? The church is composed of individuals um, and um, and, and I believe that um, uh, this imagery is twofold in the sense of the Christian as an individual is fighting uh, a spiritual war. But even the church of God is fighting a spiritual war. Remember Christ said that the gates of hell on this rock that is himself, I will build the church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So the church is in itself um, in, um, in a war, but even the individuals. So we are supposed to help each other. We are supposed to, um, even if you read this text, uh, if you just go down there in verse 18, it talks about praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching there with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. So it is not just um, something individual. It is also something uh, corporate, this war. The, the devil hates the church of God. If you read the book of Revelation, the Bible says, and the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and are the testimony of Jesus. So um, we're supposed to strengthen one another in this uh, battle. We're supposed to encourage one another, pray for one another. And um, yeah, and even when we meet, our faith increases, you know. Yes. Now, uh, when uh, it talks about this unified uh, unified army that uh, Paul is uh, the lesson author is trying to, uh, to 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 bring out. How does me, an individual Christian, how do I contribute to a church being a unified army, moving forth as you know a well-oiled machine? Mm. Yes. 
I think uh, by ensuring that, uh, you know, Paul tells us that let us keep the unity, uh, the bond, uh, the unity of the faith in the bond of the spirit. And I think it's uh, by walking in the spirit. Mm -hmm. When you walk in the spirit, by mm -hmm. ensuring that you keep your own uh, soul in Christ, by the grace of God, that you are following. You know, if the Bible says, if we are walking in the light as he is in the light, mm -hmm. we'll have fellowship with one another. Mm -hmm. So if I'm walking in the light, uh, the Jesus in me will respond to the Jesus in Siabe. Mm -hmm. and, um, and we shall be able to, um, the whole world shall know, we shall love one another, and by this they shall know that we are his children. Mm -hmm. So I think um, just by me being a true converted mm -hmm. Christian, mm -hmm. ensuring that I'm following Christ mm -hmm. as closely as I can, it mm -hmm. will contribute to the unity. You know, it, it will contribute to the unity because um, we will be of one mind, you know, because you are being led of, by one spirit. Yeah, that's what mm -hmm. I think. Janice, what do you have to say? Um, I think when, when you think of an army, it mm -hmm. means these are people who are qualified. Mm -hmm. When, like for example here in Kenya or over the world, when people are enrolling to join the army, yes. there are certain qualifications that they must have mm -hmm. to join the army. But in this instance, we see that God is calling us to be in partnership with him, mm -hmm. to spread his word, you know. Mm -hmm. And the call is for those who will respond. Not everybody will respond to the call. Amen. There are people who can, you, not all of us, when you are called to, 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 to go and join the army, let me use the army as for this instance, not everybody is a general, there's only one general, mm -hmm. there, you know, there are others who are like uh, warrant officers, there mm -hmm. are those people, you know, with different majors and, you know, mm -hmm. the, the ranks that are there. Mm -hmm. And everybody has a part to play. Mm -hmm. For the war to, to be won, mm -hmm. everybody has a part to play. God does not w work with cowards. Look at the story of Gideon. When, mm -hmm. when people were called to go and, you know, and fight, mm -hmm. there were people who went, you know, they were told to how, there were, there were, there were tests on drink, how to drink the water and all those. Mm -hmm. And if these ones failed, they were told, mm -hmm. if you are a coward, you are told, if you are a coward, leave. Mm -hmm. So God wants people who are courageous mm -hmm. to go and help, help in the battle. In mm -hmm. fact, God will work with us when we mm -hmm. trust him. We cannot win this battle by ourselves. There's something I also wanted to add, which mm. says, on every hand, a vigilant force led mm. by the prince of the powers of darkness, who never slumbers and never deserts mm. his post. So the, the foe does not leave his post. Amen, you know? So when, whenever a Christian is off his guard, mm -hmm. this powerful adversary makes a sudden and violent attack. Mm -hmm. Unless the members of the church are active and vigilant, they will be overcome by his devices. So in other words, we should mm -hmm. be vigilant. Amen. A soldier does not sleep on his mm -hmm. post. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. thank you. I, I like this. There's, there's something very... Very important uh, you, you brought out, and I, I just remembered as I was reading uh, this lesson, that Paul is bringing an aspect of you, of the church knowing its enemy. You know? Uh, because in war, when you go to war, you've got to study, you, you've got to know about your enemy, the, the, the weaponry of your, of, of your enemy. So Paul is bringing, is, is, is trying to, to tell us that, hey, you know, your enemy is like this. And so if it's like this, then you should have this, this, this kind of alertness. You should have this kind of weaponry. And I, I think I loved that, uh, the way Paul has brought it. And the way we have been building uh, since we started this lesson. You know, we saw uh, the church depicted as the bride of, the bride of Christ. We saw the, the church depicted as the temple of Christ, the temple of God. And now as Paul is you know, coming to the conclusion of this, he's, he's bringing this aspect of the church being the militia of Christ. That the church is the army of Christ, you know, uh, that should be ready in in in, in going forth and uh, you know waging uh, peace as as it were. So there are these weapons that now we want to to, to to look at. Janet, can you tell us about the breastplate, the the belt and the breastplate? Um, when I was looking at this, the belt and the uh, breastplate, I've not been in an army before, but I'm just <laughs> trying to, rem to remember. I remember the yeah. David's story yes. when he was, you know, they put on him the, the breastplate and, and it was too big for him mm -hmm. to go mm -hmm. to war with. But he also had his own, um, how do we call it? He was armed with his five stones mm -hmm. and, you know, he was ready for war. Yeah, yeah you know. Mm -hmm. So for us, um, when you think about a belt, belt, 
it it holds up the the, 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 the uniform that you have mm. because if the belt is loose your uniform yeah. it will, you know it will it will fall mm -hmm. so um here we are told that mm -hmm. um we should arm ourselves mm -hmm. you know we should be sober and vigilant mm -hmm. because how can we win a war if you are not sober yeah. How can we win a war if you are not armed? Mm -hmm. Because you mm -hmm. must arm yourself with the mm -hmm. word of God. Mm -hmm. You must and arm yourself with mm -hmm. what it takes having the power of the Holy Spirit, you know? Mm -hmm. Because it will reach a time mm -hmm. when you will be put in a tight spot and you will not be able to save yourself. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, there's, there's absolutely no safeguard mm -hmm. against evil but truth. Mm -hmm. You know, the truth will always make us free. Mm -hmm. So if we have the truth in us, we'll be able to overcome. Mm -hmm. So um, is, we must also put on every piece of the armor and stand firm. Mm -hmm. You know, when you put on, when you see somebody with that breast, uh, the breastplate yes. here, it, mm -hmm. it really um, shows you this person is ready for war. Mm -hmm. when, you, when you see um, People who've, who've, you know, decorated themselves as they are ready to go yes. for war. Mm -hmm. The breastplate speaks a lot because mm -hmm. it means they are protecting themselves from any arrows, from any guns, mm -hmm. from any, mm -hmm. you know, weapons. So, um, we are also told that the Lord, the Lord has honored us by choosing us to be his soldiers. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. God has called us to, to go to fight this war with him. Mm -hmm. So let us fight bravely for him, maintaining the right in every transaction. Yes. Let's not you corn us mm -hmm. when you are trying to fight this battle. Mm -hmm. Don't try to, to think you can outsmart the, the opponent mm -hmm. by being cunning. Yes. If we use the truth, the truth will always mm -hmm. help us overcome. So no man can stand firm for right mm -hmm. in whose heart the truth does not abide. Mm -hmm. So if you think you're going to fight this battle and you don't have truth mm -hmm. in your heart, you'll not be able to, to fight this battle. Mm -hmm. There's only one power that can make and keep us steadfast, the power of God mm -hmm. imparted to us mm -hmm. through Christ. Mm -hmm. So when we think about this, uh, the breastplate and the belt, it means the two go hand in hand. And we need to armor ourselves with the faith that God wants us to fight this battle because we cannot go to war without knowing what you're going to fight. We must be ready and impart ourselves with the word of God and the full armor of God. We should have it with us at all times. Amen. Uh, Michael, uh, this past week we saw many, many people were baptized. I mean, amen. It's like they have enlisted themselves. Because once you come to Christ, you enlist yourself in Christ, mm -hmm. in, in Christ's uh, army. Amen. So what, what would you tell such a person of the, 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 the belt mm -hmm. and breastplate now that he has, he has publicly declared that, mm. yes, I've accepted Christ. I, mm -hmm. I come in, I've joined the church. Mm -hmm. How would you uh, talk to such a person? Um, wow. Um, of course, uh, I'll tell them that they have joined an army, but it is the winning army. Mm -hmm. So they should have that confidence. Mm -hmm. I read that, we read mm -hmm. that the truth will triumph. The question yes. is, will you triumph with it? Mm -hmm. You see, mm -hmm. um, so um, there is hope, you know, there is sure victory with Christ. Mm -hmm. And so um, they should enlist and they should follow, mm -hmm. you know, and they should have you know, their loins guard about with the belt of truth. Mm -hmm. You know, truth, something I like to add, you know, like we men, we put on, mm -hmm. when you have a belt which is fitting, you, you, you like me, I'm comfortable seated here, and yeah. you are comfortable yes. because you can even stand. Yes. You see, but, but when you don't have that belt, you know, mm -hmm. you, are, you lack confidence and you are likely to be ashamed. Mm -hmm. So I think truth is important, mm -hmm. you know, and, and um, truth, with truth we are confident, mm -hmm. with truth we are covered, yes. you see. And uh, but 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 the opposite of the opposite of it, in, you know, in terms of lies mm -hmm. and 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 not knowing the truth, the ignorance of the truth mm -hmm. is even shameful. Yes. You know, um, shameful ignorance. I re I remember reading something like that mm -hmm. this week. So uh, we need the truth mm -hmm. to 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 guard our loins with, you know, and so that we can we can we can go confidently to war. You see, the Bible talks of uh, those who rightly divide the word of truth. Mm -hmm. You see, a workmanship that needed not to be ashamed. Shamed. So there's the element of shame when you, when you don't know, when you don't have the truth, isn't it? Yes. There's the element of uh, you, you, I read in the great controversy of papists who are put to shame mm -hmm. by, by men who are just humble men because they, were, they knew the truth of the word of God. Mm -hmm. 
So I think the truth gives us that. It's like Christ, mm -hmm. you know, look at Christ and the way he was asked questions. Mm -hmm. And because he knew the truth, he was so confident. If you read Matthew 22, mm -hmm. and, and, and those who are ignorant, you know, from that day they realized this man is, is, the, is we should learn from him. Mm -hmm. And um, so they, they, had, they stopped asking him questions, you mm -hmm. see. So truth, that's the beauty of truth. Mm -hmm. And as Janet has put it so rightly, truth will set us free. Amen. Truth will Amen. give us confidence. Amen. Truth is a firm foundation you can stand on. Amen. Sure. That's what Amen. I believe. Amen. There's a verse I want us uh, to read uh, that uh, it's talk, is being talked about here. First Peter. That is First Peter. Chapter 5. First Peter chapter 5, uh, reading from verse 8. First Peter chapter 5, reading from verse 8. It says, and Janet touched on it, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a rolling lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren, that are in the world. Now, this adversary is not asleep. He is moving around, walking about, seeking whom he may what? Devour. So, this element of being vigilant or being a soldier, I don't know if whether you've, you've, you've seen you know, when soldiers are preparing you know, war, there's a, an element of alertness because you lose concentration, you are gone. So in this Christian journey, uh, we ought to be sober. Now, sober from what? Maybe you can touch on that. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. I like that you've asked me that because it's something which struck me as Janet yes. was talking about it. Yes. You know, we're supposed to be sober. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to be to ensure that um, we are not absorbed. We are not drunken with the cares of this world mm -hmm. or, with the, with the, or with the pleasures of this world. Mm -hmm. You know, those are the things that uh, we need to be, to be able to think correctly, mm -hmm. to, to be able to discern between good and evil. Mm -hmm. You see, yeah. we cannot afford to be sleepy. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we should avoid anything which tends uh, towards mm -hmm. not being mentally present, mm -hmm. you see, or spiritually awake. Mm -hmm. So we need to be... Maybe as, as you comment on mm -hmm. that, just connected. Last week we, we saw that this war that Paul is, not, uh, is talking about mm -hmm. is not a physical war. Mm -hmm. It is a spiritual war. Yes. So connect that uh, with uh -huh. this being a spiritual war. Uh -huh. This being yes. a spiritual war, mm -hmm. we should uh, do what Christ told us. Mm -hmm. Watch and pray, mm -hmm. lest he enter lest he fall into temptation. To temptation. And, and, he, and he repeated, what I say to you, mm -hmm. I say to all, watch. Mm -hmm. In other words, mm -hmm. um, we need to be careful. We need to know what is going around. We need, mm -hmm. to, we need to be aware of our weaknesses. Mm -hmm. We need to be, uh, know your weakness. Yes. Uh, because the devil will tempt you mm -hmm. on those points. Mm -hmm. And you need to watch out yes. you, so that you don't go to places where you expose yourself needlessly mm -hmm. to temptation. Mm -hmm. So you need to be sober. You don't, and you should live mm -hmm. a life which is um, a life of prayer. Mm -hmm. You see, because mm -hmm. it is it's through prayer that we gain the grace to overcome. Amen. So you need to know your, your points of weakness. I think it is Paul who says, Paul himself tells us that um, um, that we should, um, that we should, um, that we should laying aside every weight mm -hmm. and the sin that does so easily beset us. Self-examination mm -hmm. is something that we should do. Examine yourself to see mm -hmm. whether you are in the faith. All those things, reading the word of God, mm -hmm. those things will keep you sober, mm -hmm. reading, especially reading the word of God. Mm -hmm. Asking for the Holy Spirit, the mm. guidance of the Holy Spirit. Mm. There is uh, no soberer spirit than that. Mm -hmm. You know, the Holy Spirit is in mm -hmm. I think that uh, Paul tells us we should be filled mm -hmm. not with wine, mm -hmm. rather, but with the Holy Spirit. Holy spirit. That we are very sober. Amen, amen, amen. Now, Paul goes, goes further to talk about uh, in Ephesians. Maybe we can read there Ephesians uh, uh, 6. And I'm reading from verse, uh, verse 15. And your feet showed with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Wow. That is, that is, that, 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 that is uh, you know, uh, the, the thing I've liked about this, this uh, you know, array of, of weaponry that are at our uh, disposal is the way, you know, uh, we have gone from the belt to, you know, the breastplate. And now Paul is telling us, hey, your, your, your feet should be showed with the what? Uh, preparation. Of the gospel of peace. So this gospel that we are preaching is the gospel of peace. That our feet should be taking us to proclaim what? The gospel 
the, the gospel of, 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 of peace. And that is why it was very key from the beginning that we, we established that this, uh, yes, as individuals, we got to have this weaponry in us. But we contribute to the, the, you know, the body of Christ, the church. Now, the church being a unified, a unified army, a, a army that is cohesive. And that ours should be you know, going out there and preaching this, this, uh, uh, this gospel uh, of, of peace. You know, reading from uh, Isaiah, Isaiah 52, verse 7. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news. Who publishes peace, waging peace is 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 is, is what we are looking at this week's uh, uh, lesson. That as a Christian, as a church, we should uh, be so intentional, you know, in 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 trying to bring about uh, peace, in 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 preaching uh, peace, in proclaiming peace in taking out the good news of salvation that are, has uh, already been given to us so freely at Calvary that Christ, you know, uh, from the foundation of the world, he chose us. So in this army that you and I are en en enlisting, it's a victorious army already, that victory is guaranteed, victory is assured, and that we should be so joyful, so glad uh, in, 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 in uh, taking uh, uh, this message out there. And that is why you know, in proclaiming uh, this uh, gospel, you know, to the, to the people out there who are who are wondering, you know, the, the way things are happening in the world, the way things are are are, are going on in the world, they, they they don't have hope for tomorrow. You know, they are crushed down. That the, the devil has harassed them. Uh, they don't know. You know, they don't have hope beyond tomorrow. But you and I are being told that let us put on this this and you know i was asking myself uh, how is this how is this going to to help me you know you know how is it going to help the church you know in this war uh, war of peace why because the devil uh, is is an expert in uh, you know the, the, the father of lies you know thrives in uh, division you know when people you see people fighting in, in some of uh, the churches uh, you know, in families, people are not living in harmony. Last week, you know, weeks past, we have looked at, uh, you know, Paul was focusing on the, on, on the family, you know, the, how people should live in the family. And here we are now, Paul is talking about part of this weaponry that we got to put is one that should help us, you know, uh, preach out peace. Where the devil has uh, sown, you know, disharmony, where he has sown, you know, conflict, ours as a church, as individuals, uh, should be bringing about peace and preaching uh, uh, this uh, message out there. What, what do you have to, to, to say about that? It's one of my favorite portions of yes. this uh, armor of God. Mm -hmm. um, the feet showed with the preparation of the gospel of peace, meaning we are ready at mm -hmm. any moment you know, mm -hmm. to go and tell people about Jesus. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what Christ had in mind when he said, blessed are the peacemakers mm -hmm. because they shall be called the children of God. Oh God. Those who publish the tidings of Christ mm -hmm. because the tidings of the gospel, mm -hmm. those things bring peace. Amen. These are the things which bring peace, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, um, and they give rest to mm -hmm. our souls. So Amen. I think that is missionary work. Mm -hmm. That is missionary work. At the mm -hmm. Church of God, uh, individuals and even the, the corporate body should be involved mm -hmm. in the work of sharing this message of mm. peace, this message of salvation, Amen. the message of Christ, mm. which will bring peace to the hearts of men. You know, the Bible says that the kingdom of God is righteousness, mm -hmm. peace, and mm -hmm. joy in the Holy Ghost. Amen, mm. amen, amen. Janet, what do you have to say about that? Oh, I was really uh, listening to Mosetti, mm -hmm. and he mentioned something about the gospel. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the gospel is just a message of peace. Amen. By its own when you read the Bible, mm. it gives us peace, peace mm. of mind. Mm -hmm. You know, your heart, when you receive Jesus as your personal Savior, mm -hmm. you find a peace that you cannot even mm. express or understand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, Christianity itself mm -hmm. is a system which mm -hmm. received and obeyed mm -hmm. would spread peace. Mm -hmm. You know, when, we, when it's one of the religions that people find peace when they hear the messages of Christ. Mm -hmm. There are people when you even share a pamphlet mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. talks about God. Mm -hmm. Look at the wild dancers when they mm -hmm. were sharing the, 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 the gospel. They, they put them in the hands of their clothes mm -hmm. and they were spreading this message like in universities where they mm -hmm. went to school, where people never even expected to know mm -hmm. where Bibles were hidden. They never even heard about the gospel. So it's mm -hmm. in, when you, 
you see how the word of God pierces mm -hmm. the heart itself. Mm -hmm. Um, it changes and reforms mm -hmm. us, including even the reformer Martin Luther. Mm -hmm. When he went, you know, climbing those stairs, and mm -hmm. he remembered the just shall live by faith, mm -hmm. it brought peace in his heart. Mm -hmm. And you can imagine the burden he was carrying. Mm -hmm. He felt light. When you read the great controversy, when mm -hmm. he, he tells you, he rose up, and he was like, the just shall live by faith. Mm -hmm. His life was transformed. Amen. So there's no peace which can come from mm -hmm. other things. Mm -hmm. It only comes from um, the word of God. It's only mm -hmm. Christ, through his grace, mm -hmm. can bring peace. Mm -hmm. Amen. Let, let, let me take us back to a few weeks ago we, when we were looking at Ephesians chapter 4, uh, verse uh, 25. And it says this. Wherefore, Ephesians 4, 25, Wherefore, putting away, lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be ye, be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place, uh, give place to the devil. Let him that uh, stole steal no more, but rather let him labor working with his hands the thing which is good that he may have to give to him that needed. Let us skip to uh, chapter five, 5, Ephesians 5, uh, reading from verse 2. And walk in love as Christ also had loved us and had given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling you know we should not be having as 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 christians you know you know at all time ours should be what speaking the truth you know no matter the con the, the, the consequences because sometimes we, we we are in situations where we uh, you know if we say the truth we see the consequences and for the fear of the consequences we we what we do what we lie or bear false witness against our friends could be colleagues here in church or 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 where we work where we live so uh, in in in, Ouija, in in taking this uh, this gospel, Paul is is is, is giving us uh, you know, these elements that we saw previously in our in our past uh, lessons uh, weeks past that we should be truthful, we should love one another, and that is what ought to you know to 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 to, to bind us uh, together as as Christians as we look at this weaponry, then. Uh, Paul goes further. You know, he talks about the shield and the helmet and the sword. So these weapons, uh, as we are building on, are uh, we see that every one of, of them has, has a purpose. Can you tell us about that? So <laughs> we look at the shield, the helmet, and the sword. Mm -hmm. um, interesting. My favorite... Um, um, I like the shield and the sword. Uh, so here we have, of course, I also like the helmet. All of them are important. You're supposed to put them on. <laughs> uh, but I'm usually fascinated by the shield uh, and the sword. Uh -huh. So uh, we put on the helmet. Mm -hmm. It's called the helmet of salvation. Of salvation. And uh, you put it on your head, definitely. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it's important for us, you know, mm -hmm. um, um, to be, to have, you know, to... To, to ensure that um, um, we have this, um, um, we have come to Christ, we come to Christ, and, and when we come to Christ, you know, the Bible says that he hath the Son, hath life, you Amen. know, and, and, uh, and um, the one that believeth, the one, that one shall be saved, Amen. and so uh, salvation is found in Christ, mm -hmm. and so it is something that uh, we, should, we ought to know and we ought to be settled, you know, that in Christ we are, um, we are, uh, we are, we are saved, you know, mm -hmm. and um, in Christ there is salvation, Amen. you know. If we continue to walk, mm -hmm. if we continue to walk in, if we walk in His Word and we mm -hmm. abide in Him, mm -hmm. um, then we are saved. It's very important, you know. That's what we all want, isn't it? Salvation. Amen. Yes, true. We all want salvation. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. are all in need of salvation. Mm -hmm. We are lost, and mm -hmm. this salvation is found in Christ. Amen. And so we need to put on the helmet of, of salvation. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, come to Christ, settle in Christ, mm -hmm. continue in Christ. I mm -hmm. like the text which you read, mm -hmm. as you have also. Uh, um, land of Christ. So mm -hmm. also, um, as Christ loved, also so you should walk in Him. In Him, yes, uh, exactly. So that's Amen. that's uh, uh, 
that's 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 how we uh that's my understanding mm. my conceptualization conceptualization mm. of this salvation mm -hmm. something that you walk in mm. and and you continue mm. in mm. throughout mm -hmm. uh, let me see that text walk in love as walk christ also hath loved us and had given himself an offering mm -hmm. and um yeah uh so this this so that salvation is you know walking in christ and mm -hmm. walking in being led uh, by the spirit and then there is the element of the sword of the spirit mm -hmm. Uh, it is called the sword of the spirit, meaning the word of God, mm -hmm. and uh, this is this is the Bible, Amen. the Scripture. Mm -hmm. By it, we, you know, the sword. You, you know, you advance with it, Amen. and you mm -hmm. you fight with it. Mm -hmm. Martin Luther said, uh, "This war will not be won by force mm -hmm. of arms, mm -hmm. but it will be won by the word of God. Let the mm -hmm. word of God do everything. Let mm -hmm. the word of God do the cutting. Yes. It is a spiritual war. Mm -hmm. we, we don't win it." You know, by uh, mm. by by guns, mm -hmm. you see, mm -hmm. <laughs> or by shouting, mm -hmm. uh, but it is by the word of God. Let mm. the word of God go, and the word of God will triumph. Mm -hmm. The word of God will win. Mm -hmm. So you preach the word, Amen. preach the word, learn mm -hmm. the word, speak the word, believe the word, mm -hmm. and the word will do its work. Amen. It's a double-edged sword, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so that's important. Let us um, always establish ourselves in this word. Mm -hmm. Always. And then there is, above all, I think I like it, how he says, above all, mm -hmm. take the shield of faith. Mm -hmm. The shield of faith, you know, that's, you cover yourself. Mm -hmm. The enemy attacks, mm -hmm. now you cover yourself. You fight, you, you do your offense with the word, mm -hmm. but you also shield yourself mm -hmm. with the shield of faith. Mm -hmm. There are many things the devil can throw upon mm -hmm. you. All mm -hmm. these um, doubts, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah doubts and 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 whisperings of the devil and and um, t trials you mm -hmm. see that that may come but but all these things we are told this shield of faith can quench all of them mm -hmm. can quench all of them so i think faith is very very key mm -hmm. in the life of the christian to mm -hmm. have faith um, and I, and there is no way we can separate these things. We see the, all of them are they they, they 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 are interlinked. You know, mm -hmm. the gospel of peace. The gospel is the word of God. Amen. You see the sword of the spirit, mm -hmm. and then we have also, and also it is the word of God which feeds our faith. Mm -hmm. So even the, that shield of faith, all these things are linked. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and um, so that's why we should put every portion. We should put um, the whole armor mm -hmm. of. Um, of God. Amen. 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 You know, th there is something very, very interesting as I was reading about this, that when Paul was writing this, this, this metaphor of war, you know, he had in mind Isaiah, Isaiah 59. Let us go there, Isaiah. The book of Isaiah, chapter 59, uh, reading from verse uh, 16. And he says, and he saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor Therefore, his harm brought salvation unto him and his righteousness. It sustained him. Verse 17. For he put on righteousness as a breastplate and an element of salvation upon his head. And he put on the garments of vigils for clothing and was glad with zeal as a cloak. According to their deeds, according to Accordingly, he will repay fury to his adversaries, recompense to his enemies, and to the islands he will repay recompense. Now, it's, it, this, is, this is a prophecy about Christ. Now, the Christ, that, uh, the, the, the weapon that Paul is talking about here, Christ is the commander. He's the one who has gone ahead. So when Paul is urging us to put on this, uh, is urging the church to be unified, to put on all this weaponry, Christ is already ahead of us. Christ has already put on this, uh, this weaponry that we are talking about. And he's already victor. So when we are talking about the element of salvation, you know, in the military, there are various different parades, you know, parades to uh, signify this and this has happened. But there is a parade for victory. There is a parade that where an army has already become victor. You know, they are victors, they are from war, they, are already, they have already won, and there's a kind of regalia that they put on. And when you see this, you know, this is what? A, a victory parade. So, when Paul is telling us that put on the element of salvation, Christ has already conquered. Christ has already won. That if we, we put this, uh, this armory that is at our disposal, this, this, this weapon that is at our disposal, we are assured of victory. And so, this, this to me, I saw it as, as, as a victory parade. That the, the battle is already what? 
won the element of salvation because salvation comes from Christ and he's already conquered. And we have seen in the prophecy I saw that he himself put on this. You know, he is the commander now of the, of, now of the cosmic war and he's already victor. So we've got nothing to be, uh, to, 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 to be afraid of. What, what, what do you have to say, Janet? You know, when Satan um, sees there's a gap, mm -hmm. is when he takes advantage. Mm -hmm. And why does he take advantage? He takes advantage because we are, we are not prepared. Mm -hmm. And being prepared is reading the word of God. Amen. Amen. Most of us um, just read for formality, but mm -hmm. we are also not doers of the word. Mm -hmm. You see? We are told not only to read, but we should be the do doers, doers of, of the, the word. word. Mm -hmm. So sometimes... Um, we might find ourselves in a very difficult situation mm -hmm. and you're asking yourself, how did I reach here? At what particular point? Mm -hmm. It's because we never took the word of God in, it, in its all totality. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. we, we doubt God. Sometimes we even, you're even scared of the battle yet. Mm -hmm. Brian has told us the battle has been won. Mm -hmm. It was won mm -hmm. since the beginning. Mm -hmm. And Christ wants us to also win. Mm -hmm. He wants us, to, he doesn't want anyone to be left behind. Mm -hmm. You know, when people go to war, soldiers are always told, please mm -hmm. bring back mm -hmm. in anyone, even if somebody dies in the war, mm -hmm. he has to go home, mm -hmm. you know? But in this instant, we are told to have faith mm -hmm. because when Moseto was doing this, I was just imagining those <laughs> darts, you know. If you don't have the shield, surely you're exposing yeah. yourself to the enemy. Amen. If you don't read the word of God, you're exposing mm -hmm. yourself to the enemy. Amen. If you do not um, fast and pray, you're mm -hmm. exposing yourself to the enemy. Mm -hmm. So what God wants us to do is have mm -hmm. that shield, mm -hmm. have the helmet. You know mm -hmm. that helmet, by the way, it's very tight mm -hmm. because it, it comes with something it holds, mm -hmm. you know, it has... Um, uh, some buckles it, you know, mm -hmm. you have a sword which is very, very sharp it's mm -hmm. not something that you go to, to the battlefield with a, with a, with a sh sword which is not sharpened, mm -hmm. so are we ready to face the, 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 the enemy mm -hmm. with the word of God are we equipped, mm -hmm. because there's somebody who once said that sometimes you might think you're smart mm -hmm. but wait until you're put in that uh, courtroom Mm -hmm. You can remember when Paul was put in front of kings mm -hmm. and he could still stand firm mm -hmm. and re talk about the word of God mm -hmm. until, I don't know if it was first, so you almost convinced yeah. me, you know? <laughs> so it means we must be equipped to that level yes. that whoever we are going to meet mm -hmm. and whoever we are going to, to you know, face, mm -hmm. we are ready. Mm -hmm. We should not be, you know, there and, and then all of a sudden you think you're smart mm -hmm. until your questions come in and you're mm -hmm. not able to answer even one. Mm -hmm. So let be prepared, mm -hmm. be ready, cover ourselves. The armor, as Mosetti said, it's full mm -hmm. from head to toe. Mm -hmm. Let's be ready mm -hmm. and present ourselves, you know, mm -hmm. that we are not going to this battle by mm -hmm. ourselves because mm -hmm. Christ wants us to go with him. Mm -hmm. So when you go with him, like um, there's a story in, in the in the in Second Chronicles chapter 14 about mm -hmm. a king called Asa. Mm -hmm. King Asa did what was good before God. All the temples uh, that were built, which were, you know, idolaters and all that, he thrashed them mm -hmm. and he served God fully. So mm -hmm. there was this guy who came mm -hmm. from the Ethiopians yeah, and they wanted to fight him. <laughs> and he went and told God, help mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. And they went for that battle. Mm -hmm. So let's prepare ourselves and trust mm -hmm. God fully. Amen. Amen. You know, uh, this... this uh, you know, you, you've talked about uh, this shield, element, and sword. We have been looking at, this, at these weapons. You know, I look at them this way. You know, that all these that we have looked at, all of them are um, defensive. <laughs> but when I look at the, 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 the sword, it is offensive. You know, that, you know, as, as you are <laughs> rightly demonstrating that, now this one is the one that you take. Then it reminds me of Christ. In, uh, you know, it's 40 days, 40 nights, he's tempted, uh, you know, he's, he's in the desert. And then he comes and the devil tempts him uh, after those 40 days and uh, uh, 40 nights. What was his defense? It is written. It is written. Mm -hmm. So from Christ himself, we are seeing that he's, 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 he took it, you know, you know as, as, as it is that uh, he was using the word of God. In his defense. Amen. Because the devil, you know, was using also the word. That, but he conquered it with what? 
Mm. With the word also, the same, the same word that it is written, referring him back to, 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 the same, to, to the same word. So what does that tell you and me? That the word of God ought to be in our heart, in our, in our mind. How shall we use it as, 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 as a defense if we don't commit it to what? To memory. There's no way we can, uh, you know, uh, use a weapon that is not, uh, we, we don't have. The, you know, you, you, you not take this, uh, this, this Bible and, and, and uh, you know, show it to, to, to the devil that, you know, uh, I come against you, you know, with the word of God. Where is it supposed to reign? In our hearts. And the only way uh, we can use this as a, as a weapon, you know, is to m memorize it. Is to, because once you come to you know, a situation, uh, you are out there, you are going about your duties day by day, and the devil brings a situation, you know, a tempting situation before you, you are not going to, to have the time to you know, start looking for where your Bible is and you, you know, <laughs> look for a scripture to, 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 put it, to, to, to help you stand against that temptation. So our only safety is committing this word. Is reading it day by day, night by night, and committing it to memory. So that when we come to this situation, as Christ came uh, to, to this tempting situation and he quoted the word, that we also might be able to quote the word and that the word uh, at that uh, time indeed may become a real sword, so to say. Yes. So we go, we go on uh, you know, looking at this. We, uh, the, the place of prayer you know, in this, in this uh, uh, weapon that we are looking at. Janet. What do you have to tell us about that? Um, practicing battlefield prayer. Mm -hmm. it means so even in battlefield, there's, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there's prayer there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. um, there's something the lesson writer is saying. Mm -hmm. If the church is to be successful in its battle mm -hmm. against the powers of evil, Amen. it will need to practice mm -hmm. dependence mm -hmm. on God through spirit-inspired prayer. Mm -hmm. Amen. Not those prayers you pray, but <laughs> should be spirit-inspired <laughs> prayers. Uh -huh. So, mm. we see time in memorial mm -hmm. from the Bible. There are people who went to God and asked for things and God answered them. Mm -hmm. God says in his words, mm -hmm. seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto you. Amen. He also says, when we, when we ask, you know, we, sh we, sh we should ask, we should knock, you know, and God will answer. Amen. Amen. We should, the, 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 it's ask, as, ask and it shall be given unto you, seek and you shall find, Amen. knock and shall be opened. Amen. There is no way we can go and ask God for things yet we are not even spending time with him. A child cannot ask, even the Bible says, um, a father gives good gifts to his children. You cannot ask for bread, he gives you a stone. You cannot ask for um, what he gives you, a serpent. Mm -hmm. You cannot ask for an egg, he gives you a scorpion. scorpion. You know? Mm -hmm. So if your earthly father is giving you good gifts, what about the heavenly father? Mm -hmm. So we need to be in line with God. We should have our vertical relationship with him. Mm -hmm. He speaks to us through his word. We have to make time, as we've seen, prepare ourselves, you know, having the sword. We need to have our time with Christ and read his word, Amen. as we've been told to put it in memory. Mm -hmm. But besides that as well, we need to also have a prayerful relationship. You, you, no one can give you anything if you don't ask, if you don't pray and say, hey, can you assist me with this and that? So we see in Mark chapter 11, verse 24, it says, mm -hmm. therefore I say to you, What's, whatever things you ask mm -hmm. when you pray, believe that you have received them and you will have them. Amen. So that's a promise God is telling us. So when we pray, mm -hmm. we should watch. You know, we should not just pray and then say, ah, yeah, I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> Things will be, you know. We should wa when we pray, we should watch. Amen. Lest Satan mm -hmm. Eh? shall steal upon us and make us forget our need of prayer. Amen. Our mm -hmm. need of vigilance mm -hmm. and watching thereunto. Mm -hmm. In the Christian warfare, unless there's a sharp eye hmm, on the adversary mm -hmm. and a sharp eye on ourselves, mm -hmm. 
we shall be led into certain snare. Oh. When Christ was going to pray um, at Gethsemane, with his disciple, he carried actually his, favorite, his three best friends, mm -hmm. and they went together. Mm -hmm. When he was really into prayer, because the cup, he had to take it. Mm -hmm. The father said, this one, you are the one. Mm -hmm. And he's the one who volunteered himself mm -hmm. to be our savior and die on the cross because of our sin. Mm -hmm. It was a difficult task mm -hmm. ahead of him. But you see, his disciples were sleeping. Mm -hmm. yeah. He woke them. Three times. They, st they slept three times. Mm -hmm. Until now, Moses and Elijah mm -hmm. showed up mm -hmm. to, to give him strength mm -hmm. because that's what he, he needed. Mm -hmm. And it was because he was praying and mm -hmm. having a, a relationship with God. Mm -hmm. So if we are not careful, and by the end of that, that he told his disciples, watch and, watch pray. and pray. Those people, was, they did not even mm -hmm. understand. Mm -hmm. But right now we are reading what Paul read, yeah. wrote, Peter wrote, because now they mm -hmm. understood mm -hmm. the importance of prayer. Mm -hmm. So our security on the state of, uh, our security depends on the state of our hearts. God mm -hmm. help us to take heed of ourselves when we shall certainly so, uh, or we shall certainly lose heaven. Mm -hmm. So if we don't stay focused in prayer, we'll not even be thinking about heaven. Mm -hmm. We should have a relationship with God. Mm -hmm. Read his word, mm -hmm. then pray. Amen. Mm -hmm. Man, rightly. And he says pray without, pray without ceasing. Amen. So we should not stop praying. Amen. Yes. Rightly. Rightly, rightly said. Michael, yeah. what do you have to say about that? Read his word, then pray. Pray, then read his word. <laughs> All those things <laughs> go hand in hand. Yes. Um, yeah. So to pray well is the better half of study mm -hmm. by Martin Luther. Mm -hmm. it's something we all no and 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 something about prayer mm -hmm. is that perhaps this is where the battle is won <laughs> definitely <laughs> definitely so basically this is this is where we we get the power mm -hmm. this is where faith is applied isn't amen. it amen the amen. faith which has been gotten from the word of god amen the faith which has been um yeah gotten from the word of god mm -hmm. um is now uh, you claim the promises of god in prayer mm -hmm. and then now god gives sends down grace and power mm -hmm. and we go and we overcome mm -hmm. so as in um that's that's even the life of the reformers mm -hmm. they will preach the word but mm -hmm. they will be strengthened they mm -hmm. had that boldness because they had prayed amen you see because they had mm -hmm. prayed so i think mm -hmm. prayer is very essential in the life of a christian mm -hmm. a prayerless christian is uh, uh, is a is like a sleeping soldier isn't it yeah, yeah. the soldier that is at, asleep at his post mm -hmm. That's very no wonder we are being told be vigilant. Absolutely. Yes. So we need to be spiritually vigilant. We need mm -hmm. to pray, mm -hmm. and um, and 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 God will give us His Spirit, and mm -hmm. uh, and we shall have uh, power. We shall mm -hmm. have grace. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. So it's very important. It's very key. And uh, let, let us read that. I, I like uh, how Paul puts it. You know, after he, you know in Ephesians chapter six, we are reading Ephesians uh, uh, chapter six, uh, reading from verse uh, eighteen. Now back there, you know, you have been looking at those. Uh, you know, metaphors of war, the, the different weapons and all that. You know, and after Paul uh, finishes enumerating them, then he says this, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, watching there unto with all perseverance. Prayer calls for perseverance. You know, sometimes when you don't feel like praying, you don't feel like rising up to, to pray, it calls for perseverance. It calls for, you know, determination, you know, to rise and, and seek the Lord uh, in prayer. You know, you know those, you know, one minute prayers, so bless this food, or, you know, be with me this day. But it calls for perseverance because we are in a battlefield. And he goes on to say, and supplication for all saints. Uh, there is something very key there. That Paul is asking that we ought to, pl to pray for one another. Amen. That we ought to pray for saints, you know. You know, there are people, because this, we say this is an army. There are people waging, you know, this, this war, taking the gospel of good news, you know, in very strenuous circumstances, like Paul was in, uh, uh, you know, doing, and, you know, he was, sometimes he was, you know, given strokes of the cane and all that. So Paul is urging us, says, pray, as you pray for yourself, pray for the saints out there. Pray for one another in this unified army that we are seeing, the image that Paul is using for the church. But of interest that, uh, you know, I noted here, in verse 19 of Ephesians 6, verse 19, Paul says this. You know, look at these words. And for me, that is Paul saying, and for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. Verse 20, 
for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Now, something interesting, we established when we were looking at this Ephesians that Paul, when writing this, was in prison. And so, he knows that he's going to be taken before Nero. He knows that he's going to, to stand before this powerful, you know, being who has all the authority, all, all the power to, to, to execute him. And he says that, pray for me. He's in a battlefield. These weapons that we have been looking at, we are, we are in the great controversy. We are in the great controversy. We are in a battlefield, so to say. And that is why, in, in addition to these weapons that Paul is talking about, Paul is urging us, pray. Pray for yourselves. Pray for, 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 for the church. And Paul understood the task that was before him. He understood that he's going to speak this, he's going to, be, to come before these uh, powerful you know, people. He's, he's, he needs to be, you know, you, know, you know, to have that confidence, that strength to be able to stand and proclaim the truth. The truth that we saw that we should, you know, the bell should all together because the truth holds everything together. That in standing there, he may speak the truth and the truth alone. And this needs prayer. This needs, you know, God to be beside us, to stand beside us. And we can only do that if we pray for one another. What, 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 what a, lesson, a lesson for us, for you and me, that we are in a battlefield, that we ought to, to, to pray always and, 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 and never give up. Our closing remarks. Everything together. We are told that Christ is um, in Him, all mm. things consist, and Christ mm. is truth. Amen. So that's very beautiful. And mm. I think that um, it's nice mm. to pray for yourself. Mm. It's 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 noble to pray for the saints, mm. you know, and even for, for for for. So I think it it even helps in character building that mm. you are unselfish, Amen. that you are praying for others. Amen. It is following after the footsteps of Christ. Mm. Christ prayed for others. Amen. Peter, uh, Paul prayed for others. You see, so I think it's, it is a demonstration of the love of God Amen. if we pray for others. It Amen. shows that we love people. It's an, mm -hmm. it's a, it's an, ex, it's a, it's an expression of, um, of love, you know, that you are concerned mm -hmm. for, for your fellow men. And I think it's part of the unity of the faith. Amen. So, yeah, so that's what I will say. And I like mm -hmm. the fact that Paul asks for prayer for himself. Mm -hmm. We should pray for those who are preaching this word. Amen. And Amen. Uh, Amen. pray for those who share the word. Mm -hmm. Pray for those who are at the forefront. Amen. Pray for them. Pray for all of them, you know, that Amen. God may give them boldness. Mm -hmm. We need boldness mm -hmm. in preaching this truth, you mm -hmm. know, in offending the, the devil, yeah. uh, the enemy with the truth, mm -hmm. you know, with the sword. Amen. We, need, uh, we need boldness, yeah. So Amen. What, what do you have to say? Um... I want to say mm -hmm. First Corinthians three nine. It mm -hmm. says, "For we are God's fellow workers. Mm -hmm. You are God's. You are God's field. Mm -hmm. You are God's um, building." Mm -hmm. There's something here I wanted to read. Um, it's from Christ's Subject Lessons. It says, "Our prayers are to are to be as earnest and persistent as was the petition of a new friend who asked for loaves at midnight." Remember that story in Luke yes, chapter yes. 11. Yeah. He says, The more honest and steadfast we ask, the closer will be our spiritual union with Christ. We shall receive increased blessings because we have increased faith. Our part is to pray and believe. Watch unto prayer. Watch and cooperate with the prayer hearing God. Bear in mind that we are laborers together with God. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Child of God, Paul, in using this imagery of war, telling us to put on uh, this uh, uh, various weaponry that we've, we've looked on, you know, the helmet of salvation, you know, shoes of, uh, you know, putting and running those shoes to, to spread the gospel of peace, the breastplate, you know, the belt of truth, you know, all this, as we've read in Isaiah 59, our commander, Jesus Christ put them on. And we've seen from the New Testament that when he was in situations of temptation, he called on the word of God. He used the word of God, which is the sword, and he was able to overcome. You and me can only be victorious if we only put on these weapons that we are to use individually and unified as a church that we may march forth as an army who has Christ at the head of it. And with that, we are assured 
of victory. May the Lord bless you as you meditate on these uh, themes that we've looked at today. And as we look forward to next week's lesson, may the Lord bless you. As we come to a close, I'd like to invite Janet to close for us with a word of prayer. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we come before your presence with thanksgiving in our hearts. We thank you for being with us since we began the lesson, and now we've come to the end of it. We thank you for the many lessons we've learned that we can do all things through Christ who strengthen us. And we can only do this if we prepare ourselves by reading your word, by having faith and only believing in you, because you've already won the war for us. Lord, we thank you uh, for the uh, each and every one of us who participated in this lesson, and we thank you also for our viewers that we may continue to bless them and meet us at our points of needs. Forgive us our sins. Above all, Lord, prepare us for your soon return. Ask all these things, believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. amen.